everybody. Welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica and today's video is a homeschool favorite. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys our summer favorites. So these are all of the things that we used in our homeschool that really stood out during the summer season. Now I know this video is a little bit late because summer has been over for a while, but honestly, we live in Florida. It still felt like summer and we weren't ready for summer to be over. So we're just going to pretend that summer lasted a little longer for us because we were really loving it. And like I said, it's hot enough here. It could be summer year round most of the time. So I don't know if you guys have favorites, but we definitely do. Every season, there are just a few things that really stand out as being like top things that really made a huge impact in our homeschool. It seems to be that normally it's a few books, a few games, and then a few extra things. And of course, this season is no exception to that. But I like to hop on here about once a season, once a quarter, once every three to four months, and share with you the things that made the biggest difference in our homeschool. So for this summer, we did a lot. And by a lot, I mean a lot of what we deemed pool schooling. We were just in the pool, having fun, doing school together. And so a lot of the things that I have for you today kind of revolve around that. They revolved around us having fun in the pool together as a family. The first of which is games. So one of the things that became a huge favorite for us is I ordered a floating table and it's like really big. So I'm not going to be able to put it on camera. I will insert a picture on top of me, um, but it was this big black floating table and we played games on top of it. With the table came these waterproof cards. So it's just a deck of standard cards that are waterproof. And that came with the table itself. And so we played a ton of stuff. Uh, we played war, we played multiplication war where we would flip two cards and multiply them together and whoever had the highest product would win. We did that a lot for math. We played um, crazy eights, we played all kinds of games. And if only one person wanted to play, they would play solitaire. And it was so much fun. We also have the waterproof Uno which is a blast. I will say these cards get a little stuck together sometimes once they get wet and it makes it kind of hard to like spread your cards out in your hand, but it was fun. We laughed. It just made it an extra layer of complication to the game and we played quite a bit. Uno is one of Emily's favorites, so it was a huge hit. And then the last like waterproof, the one that's actually sold as waterproof is the Spotted Waterproof. And this, you guys know, Emily loves Spot It, one of her favorite games. So it was a huge hit. Now these cards actually float on their own. So before we got our table, we were just racing, throwing these down on top of the water. And for the most part, unless your stack got really, really big, they would just float on top of the water. So that was really fun too. So if you had like a baby pool, you wouldn't even need that float. You could just do just the game. And then the other games that made their way outside to the pool, even though they were not intentionally waterproof, was the roll a story. So these are just dice and you just roll them and tell a story. So we would take turns picking a few, rolling them and then coming up with a story. And then sometimes we would do like continuations where Emily would roll two or three and start the story. And then I would roll two or three and continue it. And then like Kevin would roll two or three and end it. There are enough dice. I think we were rolling three a piece. Let's see. Yeah, there's 10 dice. So there was enough for us to roll three dice a piece and make a story. And it was just something fun to do while we were in the pool. And it also helped her with storytelling and creative writing and kind of like beginning, middle and end. So it really was a lot of fun. The other one that we played is the Think Fun Math Dice. So we have the Math Dice Junior, the Math Dice Original, and the Math Dice Chase. So all of those. Now Math Dice Junior, you have kind of like this little game like board um, and you're moving pawns. Now that one isn't technically waterproof unless you were like maybe laminate a game board, but the other ones you're just have they're just dice so it could be as long as you didn't put your instructions in the water and then the other two games that were really small that worked really well they went into a pool bag nicely and the beach bag were word shout and toss up they're like seriously these little tiny containers and word shout has all of these little letter dice and you roll them and you're racing to see who can find the word the quickest with them so that one was really great for spelling in the pool. And then toss up, you're actually supposed to keep a score with these. 
um, and we just would like play each round whoever run won that whack won that round and then we would just say okay you won five rounds I won three rounds so we didn't keep a score because you know again we were in the pool the other game type of thing that we really really liked was this spell and dive set we got so much use out of this it is these letters that are made to sink to the bottom of the pool and there's I mean tons of letters and then you also have these waterproof cards that have words on them and they're double sided. So sometimes I would just throw the whole bag down and she would go down and grab five letters and try to make a word out of them. Sometimes we would throw all the letters down and we would race to see who could make the word that we had picked first. There was multiple different ways we played. There's ways that you can play that are included when you buy it. It really was just, it was so much fun to play. I mean, all together, Emily by herself, it was a great, great way to sneak in some spelling while we were in the pool that was really, really fun. The other two things that were vital to our pool schooling were a waterproof speaker. I don't even know what brand this is. I will link it for you guys. It is Tree Lab. It wasn't super expensive. It wasn't really cheap, but it wasn't really expensive either. And it was, it was great. I mean, it was loud. We could hear it while we were outside. We used it to listen to audiobooks, and we listened to quite a few audiobooks. Our favorite audiobook series that we listened to were The Wizards of Once. Emily had read the first book for her book club um, on Out School and loved it and wanted to listen to the rest or wanted to read the rest of them, but wanted to read them with us because she said we would love them. So we ended up doing that whole series, which is four books as of right now, on audio. And that speaker was perfect for that. We would listen to audiobooks on it, and it was really, really great. The other thing along that same lines was my Kindle Paper White. It is waterproof, and I used it to read out loud to her. I mean, I read a ton of stuff out loud to her while we were in the pool. I personally read a lot while we were in the pool and at the beach, but I read a lot a lot out loud to her as well while she was swimming or diving or whatever. Speaking of the Kindle, you're not going to see it technically I guess in a week, um, you'll see it, but you haven't seen it yet. Emily got her own Kindle Paperwhite. And so she enjoyed reading and floating too, not at the beginning of the summer, but I got it for her for our beach trip that we took when we were there for her birthday. And she absolutely loved it. Her series that she immediately dove into and read was the Warriors books. They're cats and they're, they're warriors and... I, I don't know, but she really liked it. She's told me all about it. Um, and she's read, I believe, six of those books. So that was what she really, really enjoyed this summer. And then I personally am reading a ton of mystery, suspense, and thrillers. So if that is your kind of thing, I will put a link that has all of my recent um, reads that I've read personally. It's not really has to do with our homeschool, but I'll put it down there in case you're curious. And then the last thing that like really, really stood out for us and it doesn't surprise me that it stood out for us. It was a blast when we did it the first summer we did it. And we enjoyed it even more this summer with Kevin Holm. And that was our survival unit study. And you guys, I don't say this because I wrote this. I'm not trying to be like, oh yeah, you should get it because I wrote it. I mean, it is awesome. And I did literally create it for our family. But it really was a super fun way for us to all like come together and learn together as a family over the summer. It was the perfect length because these A Bear Girl books were something that I could read, something that Emily could read. It really didn't matter. We could go back and forth. Sometimes I would read them aloud. Sometimes she would read them aloud to us. It was the perfect level. It was just the right amount of information between the books and then the shows that we watched to go along with it and the unit study. It was like the best unit that I could think of, at least for the summer, for the way we were, you know, operating over the summer. It was, it really was just perfect. I can't say anything else. It was just, it got us outside, even though it was hot and we really maybe wouldn't have gone outside otherwise. It got all three of us together, doing things together. Um, it taught all of us things. And there was a lot of, of like survival techniques and survival uh, stuff that we got to do as a family and kind of discuss like these were our plans for this or this is what we would do if or you know just all of this really fun stuff so 
it was the perfect unit for us over the summer. So between pool schooling and survival school, we had a blast this summer. And these are just a few of our favorite things. So I would love it if you would let me know down in the comments, what were some of your favorites in your homeschool over the summer season? Thank you.